Welcome everybody uh, to, this is the, now our eighth meeting of the Sh Chicago Virtual Production Group. There was a change, so splash screen. Um, and today we're gonna have a special, um, uh, special presentation by Perforce. Um, I've been, if you guys have been to any of the meetings before, you've probably heard me mention this, but I'm very excited to have them uh, show us what their software can do and and really just kind of give us some uh, some best practices about how do you keep a team in sync who's working remote who's working with big files how do you keep all your render machines running your LED walls you know working and um, and so Perforce makes a lot of the solutions that will kind of keep us keep us together uh, keep us in sync so with that I will hand it off to whoever from Perforce wants to take it, take it. And then Ross, I'm gonna mute you unless you have Ross's, so uh, Ross Floyd, who's also on the call, and I are the co-founders of CVP. Um, Ross, I don't know if you have anything you would like to say at the beginning. I think you took care of it. I just parked, so I'll see you guys in a, about 30 seconds. So okay. um, enjoy the show. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, and with that, um, yeah, we will let you guys take it off. Take care of it. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with everyone. My name is Cassandra, and I am um, account ex an account executive here at Perforce. I uh, work on a product called Handsoft, which is a product management tool. And I got in touch with Scott and Ross um, in December, and we had a great idea to do this presentation for you all and um, pulled in a couple of my colleagues today to actually give you a demo of um, how our tools work in your environment. Um, with COVID and everybody working from home, you can imagine things shifted a lot in 2020. So. Um, Perforce has been known to be a tool that can um, help teams, remote teams work very efficiently and very well together. And we're gonna show you exactly how you do that in um, virtual production. Um, I'm gonna just, Johan, who is over here, uh, but you can see Johan, he's our senior solutions engineer. I work with him on Handsoft. He also works on uh, Helix Core. Um, he is currently in Sweden right now, so it's 1 a.m. Um, if you see his cat, don't worry about that. Uh, she's just looking to go to sleep. <laughs> and then we've got Ryan, who's over here for me, and uh, Ryan's a, another senior solutions engineer on the version control side. So that's um, uh, known as Perforce or Helix Core, um, which is the version control solution. So um, I think I'll let them kick it off. All right, thank you very much, Cassandra. And I'm gonna just start to, to talk a little bit about Perforce as a company and what it is as a, what type of solution we provide. So uh, many do associate the, the brand Perforce with its version control engine. So just to clarify that from the beginning, there is Perforce is now the company name and Helix Core is the brand name that we use for our versioning engine, if, if any of those of you. Uh, think think of it the other way around. That's just good to know, so you're not being confused on the later slides here. Uh, it's all of our products are famous for a couple of things that we just listed here as a number of bullet points. So it's built for scale architecture. So when there is some kind of complexity, it could be that there is you know the size of your files, it could be the amount of files, the amount of people that's involved, or the number of different locations that you're working from. If there's any such complexity that you need to work with. We, we kind of built our solutions to support that from the beginning. Uh, performance is something that we're well renowned for as well, that we're building solutions that are, uh, the, I would say the fastest, so the fastest version control system, the fastest project management system and similar, uh, especially then popular in industries where that is really, really important. So one of the industries uh, we're very big in is for example, the game development industry. We're also, are, like semiconductor industry and similar, but there are a lot of creative uh, kind of industries using our products because of the fast pace that those industries uh, require. Scale we talked about this being, I mean, I think our largest customers are, you know, I, I don't know if I can say how many thousands of users, but they're very, very large scale that they're using our products at for, for many of the products that we're using every day are built using our tools as uh, the, the version control and planning tools. And, 
testing and also a lot of other things. And since many of our tools are used in then critical environment in different ways, they could be because of compliance needs or other things. There's also a lot of security built into our products, which can be, of course, critical for, I imagine, also many in, in the movie industry and similar because of, you know, you, you want to make sure who can see what, what part of your production faces. And I'm going to show you a couple of slides more, then we're going to try to jump into our tools and actually spend most of the 30 minute presentation time that we have here today to actually show you what is going on. So uh, bear with me for a few more minutes here. So when we talk about what we do at Perforce in general, we usually use this DevOps cycle as we call it. So develop, DevOps standing for development and operations working together. I think it's really just a fancy way to describe how do you collaborate as an organization to achieve something in a continuous way. So we are very much focused on the left-hand side of this cycle. So you see planning, that's where we'll be talking about Handsoft as a product. When it comes to actually creating the actual assets that you're building and everything else, we're gonna talk about Helix Core as the versioning engine driving all of that. Then we also have products for verification and preparing things for being production ready and so forth, which we will not talk about today. I'm sure if anyone is interested, we can talk about it later, but, but we're thinking these are the two products that are most common, kind of most popular, makes the most sense for, for what you guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But this kind of process is maybe not so relevant for, for you, I imagine. So what we did is that we put together a, a visual here based on uh, what we saw about virtual production, also what we learned. And what we're kind of saying here is that we're having a, all of our digital assets, they kind of plan and scoped in Handsoft. So, you know, everything you do related to planning and tracking happens in Handsoft. So that's where everything kind of gets structured up. You know, what are the tasks we need to do? What's the schedule? Which are the people that's going to help us out with what? Um, and then it moves through these different phases. So you got your concept, pre-production, production, post-production post and rendering, et cetera. All of that is, the, you know, very classical project management stuff can be managed in Handsoft. And the outputs from all of these things that you are then doing on a daily basis, where, you know, if you're doing previous things or a stunt phase, or you're going into the, the photography of things or the reviews and other things, much of those or all of those things should actually be versioned then properly, right? And that's happening in the Helix Core version control engine. So we're kind of two tools here we're gonna to talk about today, which are a little bit working in the background. You know, these are things you need to be there to help you to work, especially if you need to work in a distributed way. I will come into some of these things again when we'll, we're talking about the actual, or when we look at the actual tools in the demo here, but hopefully most of these are already, you know this much better than me in terms of the details and Ryan also knows this much better than me. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail now and then we can, we can come back to some of these parts of the actual process that we're looking to show you uh, today. When I read this virtual production field guide, I actually read it just last week for the first time and I know my colleagues already before that, but I thought there was one quote from there that was really, really interesting. And so in contrast to traditional production techniques, virtual production encourages a more iterative, non-linear and collaborative process. So in my experience, when I have worked with, with people that are in the movie industry in the past or, or trying to make you know, uh, things very closely related to that, they have usually been coming to me talking from a very, what I call a waterfall approach of thinking in terms of process, right? These are the, you know, locking things. There's a famous iron triangle from a project management perspective where, you know, you have locked your time, you have locked what you're going to do, and you have locked the, the people that's going to do it, right? So, so that gives you very, very little flexibility and often puts you in a very, very tough time when it comes to scheduling and pressure and what we in the game development industry talk about, like can lead to crunching, et cetera. When I read things like this, that's where my agile heart, you know, goes like, yeah, right, you're on the right track now. I love this. And you see the outputs, you see the attention that, that you know, productions like The Mandalorian has received. And, and you start to, you know, realize, well, actually what's happening in that process that we showed on the previous slide is, you know, many of those things are shifting left. Many of those things are actually having now, you know, the technology available. So people that are artists or 
directors or producers or something else, they have now the ability to, to, to be agile in its true form, you know, embracing change. You know, when someone realized, well, actually we should do it like this, or we should put something like this instead here. Well, you can test that out and you can work with it in a much more non-linear way, just like was coded in here. So that was one thing that, that really got my attention as where I think also, well, if you're moving in this direction, also our tools must more or less become must have tools in my opinion here, because we're doing, you know, the best tools, <laughs> very biased of course, for these kind of problems where you need to move through a complex process to, to realize something visionary and you need to adapt to these changes all the time. You need to keep track of everything and maintain the structured, but having a very non-linear and collaborative process that has to work. Also, if parts of the team are in the US, parts of the team are in the, in the EU or in Europe, and parts of the team are in APAC, for example. And we just added, because we wasn't sure about really what, what kind of technical level we're going to put this on. So we just added a couple of slides here to introduce you to the very, very basics of uh, the concepts we're going to talk about. So the first one is about, I've been mentioning the word agile a couple of times. So what on earth is that? If, if you've seen, use the term, you might have used it from, you know, the, the overuse in many marketing buzzwords and so forth. But I think there's a lot, a lot of good things in agile that is useful and beneficial for actually everyone, regardless of what you do. And there's a good definition of it. If you go to agilemanifesto.org, that manifesto has its roots in, in the software industry. So some adaptations or modifications definitely needs to be done if you're looking at this from, from a, a different industry. Uh, but one of the most influential kind of agile coaches there is, is a fellow Swedish person called Henrik Knieberg, who has a lot of, I think, really good content out there to describe what is agile. Uh, fairly complex practices, but he's very good at explaining it on, on YouTube and other places. And one of his visualizations that I borrowed here is for how he describes, for example, how you can work with minimum viable products. So if you're solving a problem, like in this case, we're moving from point A to point B, uh, we can use this as, you know, we got the, the, the one wheel would be, you know, my concept, pre-production, production, and then we render, et cetera. You know, we, we reach the final goal in a way that, you know, the customer or whoever you're trying to satisfy with whatever you're doing is not going to be able to use it or get, you know, have a validation of what you're doing until in the very last moment. So, for example, then, if I'm once again taking a, a comparison with, with the game development industry and the, and the creativity we see there, the idea of working with vertical slices in everything you do. And I think that's also, you know, typical examples of a previous, et cetera, moving more into that. So what can we do to just make sure and validate that we are on the right track through our process of, of making this masterpiece that we're going to be a part of here now? How can we change our process so that we still do everything that's needed to get a high quality movie to watch in the end, but how can we do it in a way so that we are, you know, validating the things that we are looking to validate or the things we're looking to show or the messages we're trying to get across, how can we build that into our process? That is all what Agile is about. So that when you learn something, when you discover something in the middle of, a, you know, when you're taking a, 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 making a scene or something like that, you have that ability that, Unreal Engine and, and other new technologies uh, for this industry gives you to actually make those modifications. You're not locked into that iron triangle that I mentioned to, to, to get things done. So that's a little bit about what Agile is. And I'll come back to, to project management and planning here when I show you Handsoft in a second. But Ryan, I thought I'd hand over to you to, to quickly just cover what is version control. Sure thing. Um, so I'm going to keep it super high level just because, um, but we're, because as we're hearing in the, the media space and the movie space, that version control isn't used at all. Um, small projects, it's a bunch of files on a server and there's overwriting and there's overlapping, there's redoing. Um, so when, when other companies saying, Hey, you know, have you used Perforce? What's Perforce? Um, uh, well, it's a version control system. Well, what's, what's version control? So version control is essentially taking files and keeping the history and changes of those files on that file. 
Um, so you have, let's, in this case, uh, this is more of a branching. Um, so the concept is you have, let's, trees or rocks. So I'll, use, I'll use the rock example. So you have a version A of a rock. Um, you go in, you modify it, uh, you save it, and you can save it back and it'll be version two. So it's the same rock. It's just now at the at the different pointer. So it's at the, the blue, uh, brown rock. The director says, hey, I don't like that brown rock. I want to turn it green. You change the color to green. It changes the color. It goes updates that rock. Rock that now rock has three versions. If they don't, the director doesn't like it, they can go back and say, Oh, I want that brown rock back. You right click, you say, you know, get later, get get that version, and you can go back in history. So it keeps you history. Um, and when you have it within Perforce, you say saved it in all, usually a cloud or on-prem server that you have backed up and you can kind of go back and forth and keep your history. And so there's lots of fantastic uh, workflows and schemas that you, um, and branching models that you can do to, to kind of say, um, I want to work on to separate work. So in this case, in this case here, you have a, um, a movie, a virtual production. Um, and for instance, there's a there's a problem with the background, um, just the background. So somebody could create a branch, which would say, I want all of the same code. I want to put it in a different area. I want to call it background, or in this case, dev build 13.5. And so developers, artists can go in, work on that code in that branch, make their changes, and then they can merge those changes, depending on the files, into that main line um, without disrupting everybody else. And so you could have different teams working on different content. And so you could have multiple branches um, and kind of really kind of work forward. Uh, one of the big benefits of, ha of having Perforce Helix Core is that we have streams. So you don't have to sometimes do that branching model. You can actually work on components. So if you're working on just the level or just the art assets and materials, you can work on those in that concept. And when those materials are ready, you can actually send those up. That has a small kind of a filtered view. You don't have to grab the entire project. You can grab just the models. Um, so there's, that way you can kind of keep history. Um, also, the two, you can keep it compliant and uh, secure. So I know in the movie industry, there's lots of security and, and compliance. So you can know who changed what, when, at what time, and how they did it. And then you can, you can make sure that those assets are, are, are required. So um, I'm gonna pause there real quick. All right, um, yeah, so why don't you go for it, Johan, next, next slide. Perfect, perfect. I think we're, just wanted to mention our integrations quickly here with, with Unreal Engine and Unity, because that would be of special interest. Um, so we are focusing with our products in general on you know the most epic scales, the most complex situations in many ways, but also trying to keep that as fast and efficient as possible. So for example, one thing that we're hoping to show you today is, is how does it work with, with uh, Unreal Engine? How does Perforce kind of fit in and, and uh, work out of the box with, with uh, that as an example? But just to mention that we also work well with, with Unity there. And with that said, I think we're going to skip PowerPoint for, for tonight and jump into our tools. So what Handsoft is, if I just get started here with, with diving straight into it is, you know, it is something that's going to help you with transparency and overview and become your single source of truth on the production level. So if we're doing a little bit of role playing here, I'll be the kind of producer. <laughs> and, you know, this would be my, my tool that I will use uh, to make sure that I am on track with different things that I are managing the key dimensions of, of any project management aspect, which would be, you know, not only uh, things like, you know, how much work do I have to do and so forth, but it's, uh, the timeline, of course, we have things like the scope, we have things like the people, the resources. So I'm just going to move you guys a little bit here so I can click over here. Where we right now can see my entire team, everyone is super busy. I can look at this by different skills that are people in different teams that I'm working with. And I can look at, we have built in issue tracking for quality issues and things like that. So we're trying to cover all of the needs on that project management level. Now, what we're looking at here more specifically at the top is what's called the GAN schedule, right? Where everything is lined up with the start date and end date. We have some dependencies. So if I move this out a little bit, we're gonna push the production phase out, which is you know, by, by far the most common way that I see plans being made for, for uh, virtual production similar thing. But I think that's changing. So what is interesting about Handsoft is that you can have this way of building a plan, but you could also embedded into this have uh, sprints. 
So a sprint is a concept, I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, where you work in a much, much more iterative way. Instead of you know, laying out every single task to the lowest detail and try to say exactly when do we start, when do we finish, what are the dependencies between these, we're, we're locking the time to a much, much, much sh shorter time period, in this case, two weeks. And actually to complicate things here a little bit further, what I've done is that I've added many teams that are all uh, working in parallel. So they're all starting the sprint on the same day and they finish this on the same day. And this is a, a good practice called adding cadence to your planning. So everyone kind of starts and stops on the same days. So you have uh, good uh, points in time where you can uh, coordinate any dependencies across these teams or any problems. You can do reviews, you can share things together, but during a period of time, you're kind of working with a locked scope. So that's typically put into something called a sprint backlog, which in this case, if I add a couple of tasks here, task one, task two, uh, it's just a, a fancy way of specifying what is each person gonna do every day. Uh, you can do this with, like I'm doing here, adding it into this view. Very often teams prefer to look at this from a, uh, like a Trello for those of you who've used that product, you know, this kind of Kanban board view, which can be really good because if you have already a couple of things in progress, for example, actually I'm gonna assign all of this to myself uh, and I'm adding too many tasks in progress here. I'm gonna add a couple of more. You know, one of the most good things with a board like this is that if you start from a very zoomed out level, when you're looking at your team, you know, what's going on in this team today, and you start seeing immediately, hey, we got things piling up here. That's when you start to very quickly can see we got a bottleneck. We can communicate that for everyone. Everybody understands it's very straightforward that we get you know, way too much in progress right now. It's probably not a good time to start on all the other fun things we want to do. We either start to get things done or we start to, to make some decisions to move things. Around. Johan, Johan, can I have some work to do? Yeah, so let's let's give uh, Ryan a little bit of work here that you can pick up later. Actually, I'm going to give you, Ryan, a little bit of extra work soon here uh, looking oh, at okay, our cool. pipeline, so don't worry about that. All right, great. Uh, so what, well, Johan's giving him some work. Um, so traditionally, the movie st studios has been very timeline waterfall-based, right? Because you have to, mm -hmm. on set times, you have weeks, you have very detailed schedules. But when you have those really strict schedules, you can kind of break it up into sections, right? So you have artists doing previous, they can work on a different schedule. Uh, they can work on an agile schedule. They can return in content daily, 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 but they have to be done by a certain date. You know, overall, it could be a waterfall, maybe some agile teams or different things. So that's the power of Handsoft where we can kind of do multi project uh, types, which is kind of nice for, for movie production. And, and I think one thing that is worth adding here is also that, you know, all of this, is something that people in producer type of roles typically are very interested in. Uh, the, the individual artist is doing this work. This may be, you know, look, it's way too much, <laughs> way over complicated. And either come on board is good, but also we have these to do lists, which are where, you know, exactly what it sounds like. You got a very basic list of things to do. If it is prioritized, it's going to show up in prioritized order. And it it's, doesn't get any harder uh, than anywhere else where it's just going and says, I'm done with that. And then now I'm lucky because my to-do list is empty, but normally you get started on the next thing, right? So even if you're, you're, you're building up a plan across hundreds of people, there's you know, thousands of things going on uh, because that's the way you plan and work. We try to not make that complicated for the end user who you need input from to understand the current status, you know, what happened I don't know, in our outsourcing location in Serbia where we did something uh, yesterday while I was asleep and now I'm awake, what has been going on so I can get started with what we're doing here in Chicago tonight, for example. And that's the first part, keeping it simple for the people who you need input from to keep this plan up to date. Now, the other interesting thing about Handsoft is uh, our backlogs to lift this one step above the planning layer. So in this case, the projects are called the Perforce Awakens. There has something called a movie backlog. Typically, this is called a product backlog, but I just renamed it to a movie backlog, which is the, the concept of a product backlog in Agile is really to give that clear ownership and decision-making on uh, driving and helping the, whoever is driving the vision forward. This is like where you make 
the big decisions on priorities and uh, when are or what are we going to do so in this case it's actually I, i've added a plot here where we're going to have a number of different scenes that we're going to work on there's what well, we get some high level input in terms of estimates and and we can add any type of, of attributes we want here actually so if i expand one of these in my previous section here for example you will see that i got you know uh, asset type and visualization for such that these are things that you can configure and add whatever way you like very similar to excel if you if you say but it's you have a lot of control here you can say who owns everything so i can delegate this to uh, cassie for example to say hey you own this scene you take ownership of defining that what we need for the different phases and then the good thing with this is that once we decide okay so these are the things we're going to do this is goes into our next sprint so our next two week cycle so i'm just going to move this side by side so i take this you know asset that we're going to build i move that over and what Hansoft is going to do is that that's going to know what type of asset this is it's going to have a pipeline defined and it's going to break that down so right now we're getting started with this car Ryan got 23 hours left now <laughs> to get this done with. So I'm going to hand over to him here in, in just a second. Uh, but this is all things that you can configure in Handsoft. And you don't have to be an engineer to configure this. You go into the interface and you look at your art asset pipeline in this step and you build with like Lego boxes if you have the permission to, to define what are the different steps we're going to take, what can happen in parallel. Uh, you know, which are the people that can do it, who should be notified, things like that. So all of that is is happening in real time here with everyone that is collaborating with the same Ansoft server. So now we got some concepts and modeling work to do here. So I'm going to hand over to you, Ryan. I'm going to stop sharing. Great, absolutely. So, um, so okay, great, great. I have some tasks. Let's uh, let's go do some work. Uh, I'm going to uh, share a remote desktop, and uh, I have Handsoft. Oh, look at that. Cool. Uh, car concept popped up. So let's, uh, let's go mark that in progress. Uh, okay. So now I have pressed okay. And I'm using the, the desktop client. So we actually have a desktop client. We have a web view, so we can kind of do it either way. Um, all right. So I have this open. I have, uh, per for us. If I go full screen, can you guys see, still see that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I have, um, I have, I have P4V, which is a kind of our Helix core client. So it kind of works on windows. It's pretty much a file viewer. Um, a depot is where all the content is. And in this example, I have a 3D car on uh, real project in this project. So then you actually create a workspace. It's a place on the, to store your files um, on the server. And when I map that depot to my workspace, I can actually get the files. I get all the files. Okay, we've got a 3D car. Great. So I'm going to actually just take this. I'm going to double click it and pretend I double clicked it and Unreal opened. So great. So now we have Unreal. Um, one of the things I'm going to make this. I guess if I can hide zoom real quick here. So we have uh, this car demo. So pretty slick. You can click, you can play. Um, looks pretty nice. Ooh, uh, okay, great. So now my task is to change the color of the car. So I have Perforce hooked up through a source control. So Perforce is built into um, Unreal. So I'm going to change the source control settings just for this example here. We have Perforce as a selected. We have an IP address. We have the who, who's doing it, the root, and I call my 3D call car workspace. Great, so I'm gonna ex escape out of that. And now that it's connected to source control, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna take this purple and this looks pretty cool, but uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go green on this one. Uh, looks nice, press okay. Oh, look at that, three files need to check out. So I'll check them out. So with Perforce, it kind of works with Unreal and says, hey, you've modified a file you have this file open on your work, your local machine. Would you like to check it out from, from uh, Perforce? So yes, we would. So let's check out selected. Let's save that and let's close it up. And then there we go. So we now have a, a green car. Pretty, well, it looks pretty good. All right, Johan, does that look good? All right, cool, we're gonna ship that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save, but oh, look at that. So you actually did change the concept of a level. I'll touch base what level level is in a second. And it says, all right, I'll check that out. All right, some more, more stuff to check out. Sounds great. I'll save again, just make sure. And then I can actually go in and say, submit to source control. It's, it's this, it's really this easy. All right, change color of car to green. So this is actually not having to use our P4V client, 
we can use Unreal and keep the artists and the producers and directors in Unreal, keep them where they're supposed to be, not worry about versioning your files. So let's press submit here and let's see what actually that happened. So let's go open up P4V. And that is this one right here. Great. And we we'll click over to our submitted change lot change list. So our change list is a grouping of files that have been modified to for for, for editing. So we want to modify a couple of files. There we go. And we click on this view change list three. We can say we can see who did it, what they, where they did it, where the file was, what kind of file it is, um, and oh look, updated color. That's great. Let me actually let me refresh. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. Oh yeah, here we go. So I apologize. I was looking at the first one. Change this. So here's change list th six. Here's change color of car to green. So that was me. And then now I can keep working, you know, without having to change perforce. Uh, perforce. So then um, one of the great things that we, we're actually um, we're working on, we've got some uh, really cool advanced uh, integrations coming into Unreal to do kind of the stuff that Johan was, was uh, showing with in hands up client. So we have car concept. Uh, I'm going to mark this as completed. Looks great. And then that'll um, go into his backlog. Oh, there's more work to do. Great. Thanks, Johan. And then um, one of the things that we're looking at doing uh, coming up soon here is you have these files and you have these pending change lists. You can actually right click and then right before you um, submit your change list, you can actually assign them to a task. You can say in this task, I'm going to close this. So you don't have to even touch Handsoft either. So it's a really seamless experience. Get users in here and um, work, keep the artists working. And why that's important, I mentioned the levels a little earlier. So when you're in here, let's say, uh, let's pretend uh, content, let's see, let me see, collections, I think it's photo studio, levels, cinematic. Okay, so pretend you're, we're gonna put our virtual production hat on, right? We have virtual production, we've got a set LED walls, awesome multi-million dollar set stage setup. You don't want um, people checking the files in and out because you don't want them to be changed. You're shooting a movie, it needs to be consistent and replicated. So you actually can go in and you actually can lock and check a, check a file out, right? You can mark a file and you can lock a file. So we're gonna check a file out and then you can, you can lock that file. So this is helpful too, is now no one else can check in this file. No one else can modify this file. It's an exclusive lock just for, for that user. So that'll be helpful so depending on how you structure your Unreal uh, and content and, and libraries, assets, models, levels, et cetera. You can kind of keep them separate. So you have the levels which are spanning your project locked for the background of your LED wall. And so that way, when you have to change something, somebody local on set can, you know, move a mountain or move kind of move some content, check it in, check it out, uh, keep that exclusive lock to prevent kind of stepping on toes. Binaries are a little different. So we have uh, standard like source control files, which is like text, C sharp and Java files, which are text based, which can be easy to merge, right? You know, hello, you merge world, uh, world. And so it's hello world, you can kind of merge them easily. Binary files such as um, uh, OBJs and FBXs, pictures, movie files, content that can't easily be merged, then you have to kind of go in and say, all right, which is the correct version? Um, and so we have a lot of cool different things. Um, speaking of diffing, let me see if I can jump in real quick. I think we're just about done here. Let me see if I can find a uh, blueprint real quick. And all right, event tick, let's change default seconds to something. I have no idea. Let's go AI. I'm picking something completely random. I'm going to I'm gonna press save. All right, check out selected. I'm going to uh, close this one. Save it just one more time. And so the power of Unreal 2 is you actually can, can compare blueprints. Um, so I'm, I'm diffing the, the before and after, and this is built right into Unreal, which is really powerful. So you can see on the left-hand side, pretend it's a, uh, a video game. You have an actor that's jumping. You can change the, the jumping actions. So jumps double, jump, double jump, or it jumps to the right or left. And you can really kind of zoom in. You can compare and see what was changed. These get really complex. And so these are kind of the, the lightweight coding. Instead of driving into code, this is kind of more visual coding um, in Unreal's blueprint concept. So you can kind of see um, what, what happens. Well, I'll see if I can jump out of... Full screen is difficult. There we go. Let's close this. 
and says changed uh, blueprint BP. I'm going to submit this just for now. Great. Switch. And I think we're, I think we're good. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, there's a lot of content, a lot, really fast. So um, we'll definitely open to questions. And um, I know we kind of take up a little bit of your time. Apologize for that, but we just want to make, kind of show you all the cool things we can do. Awesome. Well, thank you. That was, you know, I would say that that's a, that's great. Actually, I didn't even know about that diff uh, blueprint diff thing. Cause like yeah. that would like super useful for trying to figure out like, Oh, like who modified the blueprint and why is it now broken? Yeah. That <laughs> melted my brain a little bit as well. <laughs> I went kind of fast. Like, wait, where, 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 did, where was that menu? Hold on. <laughs> you right click on the file when you do a change yeah. and it says diff against depot. Does that only work for blue or uh, blueprints, or does it work for like materials too? For example, um, right now it's blueprints. Um, okay. So we're looking at we're we, we're Epic as a partner of us. We're constantly try you know asking for new things and working with them. So um, lots of cool things coming for this year. What do you hands off integration into 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 the Helix core is, is will be really great. Do you have any idea when that's going to ship? Yeah, so there, there is one already, actually. We didn't show you now because that involves the jobs in Helix Core. Mm -hmm. That's like an extra step we wanted to skip now. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, so that's how you would do it without today, is with the jobs. Exactly. So what we're working on, and probably an early access is going to be available later this spring, actually. And then we hope to release it by, I would guess, uh, probably May, June timeframe is like a, a proper integration where Handsoft is going to behave a little bit more like Swarm. So the code review tool that we didn't have time to show you guys today, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's more embedded into P4V. So like when you, I got to change this, this relates to this task and it actually shows up your uh, to-do list very good from where you can control permissions and things like that. So we are got both having something now as well as working on something that we think is going to be a much kind of smoother uh, workflow for, for most people. Excellent. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah, virtual production tip, real, real quick. Uh, if you are if you are shooting on set, um, we we've heard that uh, setting up a perf force locally as like an edge commit edge. I didn't go into topologies. That's for later. That's bonus points. Uh, hit me up uh, or talk to Cassie. We'll we'll get something going. But if you set up an edge locally on server on the set, it's a much faster I/O back and forth. Uh, latency is a lot reduced. So um, and that way you can lock it depending on you know the content and you can do filters content so maybe just certain things are on on set so a lot of cool things you can do what does it look like setting up um, a perfor system sort of from scratch so like right now we have a git workflow and we're using um, an s3 bucket for lfs what is the equivalent of that in perfor and kind of how does that set up yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to actually, uh, I run the cloud group uh, too, uh, in the Helix core. So um, we actually have worked with Amazon. We have a uh, Amazon AWS marketplace AMI. So you can actually go into the store. It's free, includes for five users, and you can actually set up a Perforce in the cloud. And um, you can actually will save all that content onto a, onto a disk that you provision. So when you say next, I want, you know, I'd say usually we do one and a half to two X time expected data. So if you, if you have a movie coming in, it's one terabyte, we'd say go to two, just because when you're, you know, compressing and expanding files and kind of iterating. Um, and so usually it's one, five, two X. And um, when you set that up, um, we store that content for you. And so we take care of it. There's no LFS. There's any, what I showed you is exactly, is actually uh, a cloud deployment that we set up earlier for, just for this demo. So no, no mucking with settings. It's double click install. I think it's worth mentioning our support there also. Like if you ever have any kinds of trouble, like we're pretty well known for our support to get, you know, be really fast to respond to you. So when you <laughs> when you really need to, there's someone there to to help you out with any issues you may run into. Great. Any other uh, questions? No. Should I talk to Chase about this hands off situation, or should I talk to one of you guys? Um, you would want to talk to me. So, August, uh, Johan, I think you were going to show a final uh, slide just with some next steps. And August, my mm -hmm. email's on there, and you'll you'll get this presentation we'll write it down. as well. Um, and I can get it from Chase, so I'll follow up with you offline. Um, 
a couple things that we just want to share with you. Um, where do you go from here? Like Ryan said, this is a lot of information, um, but you know, we are here as resources. Um, we know this industry, um, we've been working in, in similar industries. And so we really encourage you to take a look at um, the webinar that I don't know if Scott got a chance to send it out. Ryan did a webinar yesterday um, about using um, game engines for uh, virtual production. It, it would be terrific if you got a chance to take a look at that for extra resources. Um, we do offer an indie bundle, which is Handsoft and Helix Core. It's free up to five users. And then um, beyond that, um, you can, um, we can always package um, uh, an indie bundle together for you too for a larger team. So that's something I can help you with for sure. Or Chase, like August mentioned. Um, Chase is a, is a rep that is in Chicago. He couldn't be on the call today, unfortunately, but he um, sells our version control software. So he looks core. Um, so I will make sure that you all get his contact information as well. Um, but we work hand in hand. Um, so we'll get you what you need. Um, and then of course myself, um, we offer hands off five users for free um, and we're happy to do a, a deeper demo with your teams if you're interested. Um, we are certainly excited about project management and we're also excited about um, getting into virtual production and, and bringing the two tools together. So anything that we can do to help you guys, um, that's, that's why we showed up today and we're just excited to have the opportunity to talk with you. And uh, hopefully uh, we get to talk to you further about Perforce. Great, great, thanks Thank folks you. for helping. Yeah. Thanks, Cassandra and Johan yeah. and Ryan and Terry. Um, I really appreciate you all taking the time and putting together such a good presentation on, on uh, for the group. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, uh, and we'll we'll send out uh, an email that has um, Cassandra's info in it as well, so that you um, individually you can or other people from the group that are watching this recording can can follow up with her and and get her uh, get any answers questioned or ans questions questions answered um so thank right. you for uh thank you for tailoring it for our specific use case appreciate that very much welcome thank you Great day. Right. Uh, i think you guys have other business right so should we'll hop off yeah we'll uh -huh. yeah we're kind of, we'll kind of get back to like some of our regular our regular yeah. things but um but yeah thanks again and uh yeah hopefully we'll all several of us will be in touch soon so Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you Thanks. very much.